2022 Honda Civic, courtesy of Apple Honda in York, PA. We worked for the 2022 model year. Sedan only right now, but they did just release the hatchback version, so that will be coming in the near future. And so in this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering throw, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all of that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. So as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the new 2022 Civic. First one being the LX, starting at $21,700. Then there is the Sport, which is the one we have today, starting at $23,100. EX for $24,700. And lastly, the Touring, which is going to start at $28,300. But having said all of that, there are actually two different engine configurations that come with the Civic this year. First one is going to be a two liter direct injected in four cylinder that one belonging to the LX and the sport trim level that we have today this one puts out 158 horsepower at 6500 rpm 138 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4200 rpm power sent to front wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters for the sport trim level only so that is how you're gonna get the paddle shifters on this one and you guys know we will of course be testing those out in a little bit here but all in all MPG numbers for this setup comes in at 30 in the city 37 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is the other engine configuration belonging to the EX trim and touring trim levels this one puts out 180 horsepower 6,000 rpm 177 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1700 rpm again sent to the front wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters for the touring trim level only only, not the EX, but zero to 60 time for this configuration comes in at 7.5 seconds approximately, which is kind of interesting because that is slightly slower than the previous outgoing generation of this Civic. But anyways, nonetheless, MPG numbers coming in at 33 in the city, 42 on the highway, again, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter test or acceleration test for that matter in our new Civic, I did want to mention there are some drive modes. That drive mode switch is located directly behind the shifter and that will give you drive modes like econ normal and sport adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response the steering sensitivity and the climate control settings as well for example on that last one i did just put it in econ driving mode and it did dial back the ac a little bit so that is how that is essentially going to work try to get you a little better mpgs there but overall having now set off that what do you guys say let's go ahead now and put it in sport driving mode that's what it sounds like when i change the drive modes there i did immediately just downshift so it is kind of holding the rpms at a much higher level giving you more power on demand and let's now go ahead and find a straightaway let's put these paddle shifters here to the test first and let's see how quickly they're going to react for us here all right you guys here is our straightaway in three two one here we go Okay. All right, that works, man. They're actually quick. I mean, keep in mind, this is a CVT, so it's essentially like, I don't know, simulated shifting, but still, paddle shifters are dang quick. So if you wanted to have some fun with them, you can actually do that because they're nice. All right, but now, so having gotten that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's get back full control to the Civic here. Let's find a straightaway again, and let's see how quickly the new Civic here can get us up to speed without me doing the shifting. All right, here's a straightaway in three, two, one. Off we go. It's not bad. You shouldn't have any issues with merging onto the highway. Definitely not the quickest thing in the world. Of course, that is to be expected. And again, we don't have that more powerful engine configuration, the turbocharged one either. So it's not bad. The turbocharged one is going to give you quite a bit of extra power. And of course, Honda plans on putting out the SI and the Type R if you wanted even more power down the line. It's not currently out at the time of this video, but those are going to be the ones that you want to go with if you wanted crazy amounts of power. But anyways, that was plenty fine, but to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.1 inch ventilated front disc, 10.2 inch solid rear disc in the back. As far as the braking feel goes, let's, that's really good. Actually, quite honestly, I've tested tons of those. That is a really good braking feel. Like there's no dead spots. It's definitely on the firmer side. It's not a softer braking feel. I can see the 60 to zero stopping distance being quite good for this one when it finally gets tested. So that is an 
excellent braking feel for the Civic without a doubt, let me tell you guys. But anyway, not touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension for all trim levels, you gotta love that. Front and rear stabilizer bar. And I do wanna mention though, there is a slight difference when it comes to the stabilizer bars. The rear stabilizer bar is gonna be slightly larger, slightly bigger in the touring trim level. For example, 17.5 millimeters versus the 17 millimeter for all other trim level so just a slightly bigger stabilizer bar for the touring trim level only so i wanted to mention that as far as ride quality goes that is perfectly fine actually one of the first things i know is ride quality is it's actually really good in the civic i will say that it kind of took me by surprise typically with compact cars you don't always get that but ride quality is quite good in this one as far as steering feel goes it's really good. Honda always does the steering feel very, very well. They tend to lean on the heavier side of things, which I personally prefer because it easily points you in the direction that you want to go. So when it comes to steering feel, absolutely on point 100% here in the new Civic. As far as cabin noise goes, I'm going very, very slow in a residential neighborhood right now. So you're not going to get very much right now. But I will say when I was on the highway, cabin noise is a little bit on the louder side, comparatively speaking to a lot of other vehicles in its class that I've tested. So that's maybe one of the short shortcomings of the new Civic. It is kind of loud, a little bit noisy when it comes to cabin noise at least, but everything else so far has been perfectly fine. So I will say that. And touching on visibility, I can see great out the back and the shape of this definitely lends itself to visibility. So really no issues with that whatsoever. And also I did want to mention for the touring trim level only, you will actually get rain sensing windshield wipers, which I personally love. Essentially what that is, is whenever the Civic detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on this windshield wipers for you. So it's just one less thing you got to worry about. It's Kind of like so here she is, you guys. The new 2022 Honda Civic, finished in lunar silver metallic. In case anybody was curious of our exterior color name, and again, completely redesigned for the 2022 model year, definitely for the better, in my personal opinion. This thing looks really good, and quite honestly, I think Honda is going to sell a ton of these things just based off of the looks alone. This is a very good looking compact car, without a doubt. But, anyways. I'm going to stop rambling. Let's go ahead and start up front of the Civic here. LED headlights actually do come standard for every single trim level across the board. Yes, even the LX gets LED headlights for better illumination at night. You gotta love that. Automatic feature, of course, coming with that as well, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard, of course. Automatic high beams, though, coming standard for every single trim level yet again, even the LX. I love that. Essentially what that is, is when you're driving at night, you can put the high beams on. They will stay on until the Civic notices a car coming in the opposite direction. Then it's going to dim it back to low beams. And then once that vehicle is gone, it's going to put it back up to high beams. So it is what it says it is. It's automatic high beams. It's absolutely wonderful. I personally love that feature. But anyways, LED fog lights down below coming with the touring trim level in case anybody wanted that. But one of the interesting things so in my personal opinion at least is if you guys look at where the fog lights would have gone if we did get the touring trim level it's actually re being replaced with simply a black plastic which is kind of interesting it's just it's just black plastic it looks kind of awkward it looks a little bit weird in my opinion up there but other than that i think the fog lights would look absolutely amazing but so anyways that about rounds out the front of the civic here let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of this one all right and so now since we are around to the side of this one this is really where honda absolutely crushed it the side profile of the new civic looks absolutely 100 percent on point without a doubt but anyways black window surrounds do come standard on the new civic body colored power adjustable side mirrors also coming standard side mirrors are going to be finished slightly differently depending upon which term level that you go with you will find gloss black side mirrors with the sport heated side mirrors with the ex that's how you're going to go ahead and get that and heated with led integrated turn signals then if you were to go with the touring trim level at least but then taking a look down at the wheel setup they are going to differ for every single trim level believe it or not 16 inch wheels with covers coming with the lx 18 inch gloss black alloys coming with the sport that of course is what you guys are looking at right now love the double five spoke design as well very nice wheel setup for this one 17 inch alloys with gloss black inserts coming with the ex and then 18 inch alloys with gray inserts coming with the touring so like i said Every trim level is going to differ when it comes to the wheel setup. So if you're on a lot, go ahead and take a look at the wheels. You can probably tell which trim level that you're looking at. But anyways, 
let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the Civic. All right, so once again, Honda, very well done with the back end on this one. You kind of have like almost an integrated rear spoiler to this, although it's not a real spoiler, of course, but it looks dang good. All the way to the top, though, you will find a body-colored shark fin antenna. Just below that, you can see that sport badging, of course, specifically to the sports trim level that we have here today. LED taillights and brake lights coming standard for all trim levels across the board. Honda did very well with the LEDs, integrating them into all trim levels of the new 2022 Civic. You gotta love that. And just below it all, you will find a single exhaust outlet coming with a chrome tip for the sport trim level only. So looks pretty darn good back there, I gotta say. But anyways, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around back of the Civic, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there are a few different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a button on the key fob to unlock it. There is also a button on the trunk itself, of course, and there is a button on the driver's side door then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.4 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, so quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. And there is some cargo lighting, of course, back there as well. And in case you were curious, if you lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will actually find a spare tire as opposed to the fix a flat in case anybody wanted to know that answer. But so now go ahead and make our way up to the rear legroom. That comes in at 37.4 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. If you were looking for a rear center armrest with cup holders, you will have to go with the EX or 12 trim levels rear ventilation does not come on this one unfortunately and there's no rear charging ports then for those rear passengers either unfortunately but always like to mention it but now let's go ahead and make our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seats coming with the lx and the sport heated front seats coming with the ex and the touring the touring is also actually going to add an eight-way power driver seat four-way power adjustable passenger seat and leather seating then as well but having said all that i will say it's one of the first things i noticed the seating is dang comfy especially with them being just manually adjustable cloth seats the seating is really really comfortable you guys so definitely can see myself going on a long drive here in the new civic without a doubt just based on the seat comfort but let's now go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping of course and leather wrapped if you were to go with that sport trim that we have today or the ex or the touring so it definitely has a very nice feel to it but now let's go ahead and make our way to the start up let me show you guys the new key here you do have your honda logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear hatch and then the circular button that is going to be your remote start essentially that warms the civic up on super cold days so it's already nice and warm by the time you actually get in so that's pretty cool but anyways push button start actually does come standard on every single trim level across the board so all i'm going to do here simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of all the air vents there but then once started up as far as the gauges go you will find a seven inch digital gauge display for the lx the sport and the ex then if you were to go with the touring that is going to give you that 10.2 inch full digital gauge cluster so that is going to be the really good one although this one isn't bad but that is definitely going to be the good one there so speedometer is on your right tachometer is on your left there is a digital speed readout front and center you can also adjust what is on the left portion of the gauges by using the steering wheel mounted controls it gives you trip a trip b how many miles you have left until you hit empty some radio information if you wanted it when you need your next oil change the list goes on i will say the only thing i would have liked a little better and i'm sure it's different on the 10.2 inch digital gauge cluster so when you adjust the driving modes in this thing with any gauge setup, I always like to see the gauges change slightly as well. For example, if I were to put it in sport, maybe some red hues, econ mode would be maybe some green hues. But anyways, the seven inch digital gauge display is not going to give you that, unfortunately. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. A power moonroof is going to come with the EX and the touring overhead sunglass holder coming with the touring auto dimming rear view mirror coming with the touring home link controls coming with the touring. So touring trim level really does does give you all the creature comforts i guess you could say automatic climate control i will say though comes with every single trim level essentially what that means is you can set a temperature and it's going to automatically reach that temperature for you so that's pretty cool and i will say the ac in the civics is great it's definitely very cool right now which is a good thing because it's going to get to 88 degrees here in pennsylvania today sport pedals coming with the sport trim level are 
essentially aluminum pedals, I should say. They look pretty cool down there. Dual zone climate control coming with the EX and the Touring. Wireless phone charger coming with the Touring trim level only. And overall, I love the new interior of the Civic. And here's why. I think what really does it for me is the singular air vent. And no, it's not completely an air vent. You got the air vent portion in the middle and all the way to the right and the rest of it, it's kind of blocked off, but the design to it is brilliant. I love it. It looks so dang good up there and it's different. And I like different and that definitely makes a statement. It's surrounded by a gloss black finish. Definitely looks good. Now the doors, that's a different story. Kind of needs to work on the doors a little bit, but again, it's a compact car. I guess it's as expect. Got this random piece though of plastic right behind the door handle. So I don't know why that's there. They could have finished that in like any kind of material, like the material found around the shifter here, which is brilliant, but they just left it as a boring black plastic. So I don't know, that kind of bothers me a little bit. But anyways, around the shifter, speaking of, brilliant finish they could have left this like the doors but they didn't it looks absolutely amazing i love the texturized finish to it as well it's a very high quality finish at least it feels like so i know it's probably plastic but it feels good i like that but anyways just in front of that you got a good bit of storage usb charging port 12 volt power outlet just to the right of the shifter you have dual cup holders there is an electromechanical parking brake behind the shifter and a decent amount of storage within that center armrest as well so overall interior quality is fine i think it's a lot better than the previous generation and again i love that singular air vent that looks so dang cool but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here and so again this is going to differ amongst the trim levels if you go with the lx sport or ex you're going to get this seven inch color touchscreen display which isn't bad but if you go with the touring trim level you're going to get a nine inch color touchscreen display Either way though, you do get Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. It's gonna be wireless for the Touring with that nine inch screen, although you do have to hook it up here with the seven inch screen, so I did wanna mention that, but wireless is pretty darn cool, I will say that. Factory navigation system coming with the Touring trim level. And you can of course check out your radio information up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems here in the new Civic, I will say it's a huge difference from the previous generation here. Here's why. Four speakers and 160 watts coming with the LX. Eight speakers and 180 watts coming with the sport and ex but for the very first time ever in honda history for the touring trim level you will get a 12 speaker bose sound system typically in the past honda has manufactured all of their sound systems even for their top trim levels but now bose is coming out for the touring trim level that is pretty cool but anyways we do have that eight speaker 180 watt sound system with us here today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and Let's test out the clarity of this one. I don't scroll through the past anymore. I haven't listened to country in a while. Eh, it was okay. 180 watts is meh. Eight speakers though is pretty darn good for a compact car. I will say that a lot of other manufacturers will do six speakers. So I do like that it has eight speakers, but sound system is just okay. If you wanted the best, go with that Bose sound system. That is definitely gonna be where you wanna be at if you enjoy listening to music at least. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the Civic in reverse, you will find a rear view camera with three different views coming standard across the board, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side side curtain airbags do come standard, but also driver and passenger knee airbags as well. You don't always get that. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard across the board, Honda Sensing, I love this, here is why. Collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, traffic jam assist, and traffic sign recognition as well. And again, that comes standard every single trim level. You gotta love that. But if you were to go with the EX and the Touring, you're also then going to get a blind spot monitoring system then as well. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the new 2022 Civic, I love the new look. This looks dang good. I'm not sure they could have designed a better looking compact car, quite honestly. And just for that reason alone, I think the Civic is going to sell like crazy. But LED headlights also coming standard is a brilliant thing. I think more manufacturers should start doing that. Not every manufacturer is doing that still yet so the fact that you get so much better illumination than the previous generations of the civic is definitely a very good thing 
braking is dang good as well. I could definitely attest to that. I'm not sure what the 60 to zero stopping distance is going to be, but the braking feel is wonderful. I'll definitely say that. Steering feel is plenty good as well. Honda always gets that right. Affordable pricing, also a very good thing for the Honda Civic as expected. As far as room for improvement goes, it is slightly slower than the previous generation for whatever reason. However, I will say, I do think the looks is going to make up for that very easily. New manual transmission available for the sedan. You will be able to get one in the hatchback. I've already read that. Although that's not out at the time of this video, you guys know I will be reviewing that once it does come out. And of course the SI and the Type R are gonna have a manual as well, but also multicolor ambient lighting I think would look dang good in the Civic. And I think it would appeal to a lot of buyers that will be purchasing a Civic as well. Honda, if you wanna do that in the future, I think that would definitely help sales as well. And the last thing I have to mention is this there actually are a couple changes for the 2022 inside of course you get great mpgs in this one then as well so if you got a long commute this may just be the one for you but in this video i will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel exhaust clip we'll try it at least sound system all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing all right so when it comes to pricing let me of course start with trim levels there are two of them for this year and this is the major change for the 2022 insight there will be no more lx trim level for this particular model year so ex trim level which actually is the one we have today will start at twenty five thousand two hundred and ten dollars then you have the touring which is going to start at twenty nine thousand two hundred and forty dollars but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the insight is going to be the same powering this beast is a 1.5 liter atkinson cycle inline four cylinder with honda's two motor hybrid system then in addition to that putting out 129 horsepower with the motor at 4,000 rpm with the combined horsepower that bumps it up to 151 horsepower 197 pound feet of torque coming in at zero rpm because this is a hybrid after all it's instant torque but power sent to the front wheels through a cbt zero to 60 time get this you guys 7.3 seconds in a hybrid that is pretty darn cool we will of course be testing that out in a little bit here but overall what everybody wants to know mpg numbers are going to come in at 55 in the city 49 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do that acceleration test here in our insight i did want to mention there are a few different driving modes for the insight all of those buttons are located kind of directly behind the shift buttons and it will include econ sport and ev mode adjusting things like the shift points a throttle response the climate control system actually as well so if you put it in that econ mode it's gonna dial back the climate control like the ac a little bit on hotter days to save you a little bit there but ev mode of course being full electric mode you got to be fully charged up for that but overall pretty cool a lot of adjustments can certainly be had there but Let's go ahead and put it in that sport driving mode and it did immediately downshift for me there or kind of holds the RPMs at a much higher level, I should say, giving you more power on demand. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway here and let's see if uh, see if that zero to 60 and 7.3 really feels that way. All right, you guys, in three, two, one. <laughs> a little bit of skidding there, wow. Yep, sounds like a CVT. It's actually not that bad. It's plenty more than you would expect from a hybrid. So if I'm being quite honest, it's really a lot more than I expected from the inside. Definitely not gonna have any issues with merging onto the highway, but to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.1 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 10.2 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it's going to come in at a respectable 122 feet. To be quite honest, that's pretty average for most sedans out there right now so absolutely no issues with that 60 to zero stopping distance braking feel feels a little bit different than you may be used to if you're not used to driving a hybrid you can definitely tell it is one of those hybrid braking feels but having said that it's perfectly fine you certainly will get used to it i've had no issues with the braking feel on this thing in my short test drive here today as far as suspension and handling goes up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars then as well all right so here she is you guys the new 2022 honda insight finished in modern steel metallic 
in case anybody was curious of our exterior color name we had here today. Let's go ahead and start up front. This one has a very accord-ish looking front end, which makes it look very good in my personal opinion to the sides. LED headlights actually do come standard for both trim levels of the Insight, which is pretty cool. You don't always get that. Automatic feature coming with that as well, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard. And if you were to go with the touring trim level only, you will also get LED fog lights down below but that pretty much rounds out the front of it actually let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the insight so but now to the side of this insight here chrome window surrounds do come standard when it comes to their side mirrors they are heated power adjustable body colored side mirrors if you were to go with the touring though you will get led integrated turd signals with some chrome accents actually on those side mirrors as well and of course just in front of that you will find some hybrid badging found on the front fender of course since the insight is a hybrid when it comes to the door handles they will also differ among Amongst those two trim levels there will be body color door handles for the EX that we have today and then you will find some chrome accents kind of to tie in with the side mirrors if you were to go with that touring trim level at least so I wanted to mention that then taking a look down at the wheel setup again they will differ amongst the trim levels 16 inch alloys coming with the EX 17 inch alloy wheels then coming with the touring but that about rounds out the side of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around back body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top there just below that kind of an inner integrated rear spoiler look to it so we'll say that's not technically a rear spoiler but it does look pretty darn good back there we'll say that to the sides led taillights coming standard on the insight you gotta love that and towards the bottom i will say chrome accents can be found on the lower portion of the rear bumper only for the touring otherwise you're going to get that matte black look that we currently have today but anyways just below it all i think you guys can see that there is a tucked away single exhaust outlet so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next we're going to give this a shot it is a hybrid keep in mind but as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so but now since we are around back of the Insight, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob itself to unlock it. There is also a button on the driver's side door and there is a button on the trunk itself. So any of those ways are perfectly fine. It is a manual trunk, but once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 15.1 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. Did want to also mention that there is some cargo lighting back there, and if you are wondering if there was a spare tire, there is not, but there is a decent amount of in-floor storage back there and a tire inflator kit in case you were curious. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way up to the rear legroom, which is going to come in at 37.4 inches. So for reference, I am even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back there. I did want to mention rear ventilation coming with the touring, rear center armrest with cup holders coming for either trim level. And unfortunately, there is no rear charging ports back there. That's something I always look for. But overall, I do like the center armrest with cup holders. But then making our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the EX. Touring trim level, however, is going to add an eight-way power driver's seat, leather finish to that seating, heated front seats, and a four-way power adjustable passenger seat then as well. But actually, overall, seats are pretty darn comfy in our EX trim level. Even though they're cloth, even though they're not as adjustable as the touring trim level, they still are very comfortable. I will say that. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the steering wheel. It is manually adjustable. It is tilt and telescoping. It is urethane wrapped if you were to go with the EX, but then leather wrapped if you were to go with the touring. That pretty much rounds that out. But now, let's go ahead and take a look at the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key. You have this nice blue hue with the Honda logo on the one side of the key. And then when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch. And then the circular button that says hold, that is going to be your remote start, which of course comes standard to both trims along with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. And so once started up, this actually is a fairly cool looking digital gauge cluster. You have the battery charge indicator found on your left and your speedometer found on your right. And of course, to control what is on that digital gauge cluster, there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side. So you can really display whatever you want up there. Like it can tell you your average miles per gallon at any given time. It could tell you your power flow information. It could tell you how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's a digital speedometer, audio information, Bluetooth information. The list goes on when you need your next 
shifts, oil change, pretty much everything you could possibly want up there. So that's pretty cool, I will say that. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. If you wanted a power moonroof, you do have to go with the touring trim level, so I wanted to mention that. And pretty much the touring trim level really gives you everything on this one. So the power moonroof, also home link controls for up to three different garage doors, I always like that. Dual zoom climate control coming with the touring. Auto dimming rear view mirror also coming with the touring trim level, so pretty much everything there. But I will say you still get automatic climate control even with our EX trim level here today. So I can set the temperature that I want it to be at and it's automatically going to hit that temperature for me. So that's pretty cool. I do like the soft touch material found just above the passenger side glove box with the contrast stitching. It feels like a leatherette wrapped material. So that is pretty cool as well. Also like this soft touch recycled feel on the doors here with the contrast stitching. That is pretty cool as well. So in case I didn't mention it already, as far as how to put this thing in drive, it is all button set up. So it's not like a traditional shifter. D is for drive, N is for neutral, R is for reverse. P is for park, of course, in case anybody didn't know that already. Just to the right of that, though, you have a place to put your cell phone. There are two USB charging ports and a 12 volt power outlet as well. Just behind that is where you're gonna find your drive modes. To the left of that, electromechanical parking brake. Just behind that, you will find dual cup holders. And there is a little bit of storage then, actually a decent amount of storage, if I'm being honest, within that center armrest then as well. So overall, interior quality is pretty practical. I will say that, definitely everything you need on the inside. But now let's make our way to the infotainment screen. There is an eight inch color touchscreen display that comes standard on both trims. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard Android Auto Apple CarPlay also coming standard factory navigation system is only going to come with the touring trim level if you wanted that although you don't really need it as long as you have a smartphone these days because you can display navigation up there with that radio information you can also check out up there as well and when it comes to the sound systems there are eight speakers with 180 watts for the EX and then 10 speakers with 450 watts then for the touring so Having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Pretty elaborate song there, but I don't know. Sound system was all right. Actually, eight speakers is decent for this vehicle. Usually you're gonna find a six speaker sound system in vehicles like this. So eight speakers, I don't know, it's pretty cool. So sound system was just okay there. If you wanted more bass, if you wanted more clarity, definitely go with the touring trim level, that's gonna give it to you. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Insight in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard on this one with three different angles, which is pretty cool. And of course that is going to let you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety and so first let me start by mentioning IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus which is the very highest designation given by IIHS that's pretty much says it all right there honestly front side side curtain airbags do come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door docks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard across the board is going to be Honda sensing you gotta love that that gives you a collision mitigation braking system road departure mitigation system adaptive cruise Cruise control, lane keep assist, traffic sign recognition, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, automatic high beams, and a blind spot information system with rear cross traffic alert as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Insight, pretty darn good acceleration if I'm being honest for a hybrid. I will say that 0 to 16, 7.3, and it felt darn quick as well. And with that instant torque because the electric motors, you gotta love that. So actually pretty decent acceleration for this one. Pretty good styling as well because it takes a lot of exterior styling cues from the Accord, which is a good thing in my opinion. That car looks dang good. So therefore this one looks dang good as well, in my personal opinion at least. Great MPGs, especially if you're doing a lot of city driving. 55 miles per gallon in the city is great. Also great reliability. That's pretty much standard with Honda across the board for the most part. As far as room for improvement goes, the infotainment is slightly outdated. Typically you got bigger screens these days. And in addition to that, when you actually hit a button on this infotainment screen, there is a slight delay to it as well, comparatively speaking to some of the other infotainment systems that I've been testing. Also ambient lighting would be pretty cool to see.
Honda Odyssey is still absolutely killing it and there are actually some minor changes for the 2022 Odyssey as well and not only that one of the main reasons I wanted to check this one out today is Honda for the first time I feel like in forever is offering 0% financing on quite a few of their models so definitely want to check that out go to Honda's website and check out offers so you can see if there's 0% financing on whatever Honda you're particularly interested in but also the Odyssey is known for great reliability has a very good track record for that and so in this video I will be testing out everything about the Odyssey from third row legroom to acceleration, braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, even exhaust clips. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2022 Odyssey. First one being the LX starting at $32,090. EX for $35,490, the EXL, which actually is the one we have today, starting at $38,760, Touring for $42,800, and lastly, the Elite, starting at $47,820. And so, regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Odyssey is going to be the same. Powering this one is going to be a 3.5 liter direct injected V6, putting out 280 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 260 62 pound feet of torque available at 4700 rpm power sent to the front wheels through a 10 speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit here but zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 6.6 .6 seconds which i gotta admit is quite impressive for a minivan if you were comparing the odyssey to the sienna sienna comes in at approximately 6.9 so the odyssey's got the sienna beat there when it comes to zero to 60 at least mpg numbers come in at 19 in the city 28 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but touching on cabin noise it's perfectly fine definitely absorbing a lot of the wind noise so not a whole lot coming into the cabin you guys could probably tell that and I will say that may be due in part because we do have the EXL trim because you do get acoustic laminated front windshield if you were to go with the EXL trim level and up and then acoustic front and rear doors if you were to go with the elite but then touching on visibility that is one of the first things I noticed visibility is amazing absolutely amazing I love it I can see perfectly fine out the back definitely better than the SUV counterparts that I tend to drive so absolutely no issues whatsoever when it comes to visibility also wanted to mention though rain sensing windshield wipers coming on the elite trim level so that's pretty cool whenever it detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you if you go with the elite trim level at least so just one last thing you got to worry about there but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 honda odyssey all right so here she is you guys the new 2022 honda odyssey actually looks pretty darn good completely blacked out in my opinion and so one of the minor updates for the 2022 model year is going to be a new color called radiant red metallic 2 did want to mention that so let's go ahead and start up front on this one though led headlights actually do come standard for every single trim level across the board of course they do come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there led daytime running lights also coming standard there are led fog lights if you go with the ex trim level and up meaning the lx is the only trim that will not get them active grille shutters also come standard on every single trim level across the board meaning those shutters will open and close dependent upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time it's one of those features i think i first saw in bmw that is now making its way to other manufacturers as well so that's a pretty cool one too but anyways let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the 2022 odyssey here all right so now since we are around to the side rear privacy glass does come standard across the board you will find a floating roof line towards the back of this one although it's not as evident when everything is completely blacked out i will say that but it is there black door handles come with the lx trim level you will find chrome door handles if you were to go with the ex trim level and up when it comes to those side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for all trims ex trim level and up however is going to add to that heated side mirrors with integrated turn signals then as well that is how you're going to go ahead and get that when it comes to the side skirts down below black side skirts coming with the lx ex 
and EXL, although they are matte black side skirts, but they do look just as good with this black exterior, I will say that. But I did want to mention it because body colored side skirts will come with the touring and elite. So if I were to have a white exterior, I would have those black side skirts with the EXL here. But if I went up to the touring, they would be body colored, so they would be white as well. So a little bit of a difference there, I wanted to mention. Taking a look down at the wheel setup, 18 inch silver painted alloys with the LX. 18 inch gray painted alloys for the EX, 18 inch machine finished alloys for the EXL. And if you were to go up to the Touring or Elite, you will find 19 inch machine finished alloys. So pretty much completely different depending upon the trim level that you go with. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of this one. And so now since we are round back, body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. I actually do like the chrome trim that ties into the sides as well. It goes across the back there. Also LED taillights do come standard for every single trim level across the board. Little added illumination at night and just below it all a single exhaust outlet found on the passenger side underneath there. So having said that I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around back of the Odyssey, there are a few different ways to go ahead and open up that rear lift gate. There is a button on the key fob itself. There is a button on the lift gate itself. Then there is a button by the driver's side left knee as well. And it is a power tailgate, by the way. If you were to go with the EXL trim level and up, that's how you're going to get that. So therefore, we do, of course, have that today. But once opened up, cargo capacity is actually insanely impressive when it comes to the Odyssey compared to other three-row SUVs. I'll say that. 32.8 cubic feet behind that third row. It's mainly because it's so deep back there. At times with SUVs, it's gonna be up a lot higher, so it kind of compromises the cargo capacity, so I do like that. If then I were to fold that third row down, that's gonna bump that up to 86.6 .6 cubic feet. And by the way, it is one simple thing that you just pull on to fold that third row down. It's super easy and it's completely flush then with the floor. So it's completely flat. So I absolutely love that as well. And then with all rows folded, 140.7 cubic feet. So if I were comparing the cargo capacity in the Odyssey, let's say to the pilot, pilot comes in at roughly 84 cubic feet, Odyssey 140. That is a substantial difference there if you're looking for space. I wanted to mention that, but Anyways, cargo lighting can be found back there as well. There's grocery bag hooks as well. One of the other changes is there's not going to be any cargo vacuum for the uh, top trim level of the Odyssey, unfortunately. But I did want to say there was plenty of little storage cubby areas back in that cargo area as well that I found pretty cool. So overall, good bit of space, of course. But then making our way to the third row legroom, again, insanely impressive, 38.1 inches. So for reference, I am an even six feet tall, and I was able to fit in the third row of the Odyssey. I very rarely can say that with SUV, so easily can fit in the third row of the Odyssey. I love that. Rear ventilation, by the way, does come standard for all three rows. It's not going to be found on the roof, but it is going to be found on the sides. So there's going to be some side vents for each individual row in case you were curious about that. Of course, you're going to have cup holders back there as well. Overall, still very impressed that I could fit in that third row. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the second row legroom coming in at 40.9 inches. Also very impressive. Again, six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. And so I know someone's going to ask this. And of course, I'm going to tell you guys, seating for seven is going to come with the LX. Every other trim level gets seating for eight. And let's say if you have the EXL trim level that we have today and you don't want that seating for eight and you still want seating for seven, that's fine because that middle seat right there can be completely removed by simply just pulling on one little thing there. So I can completely remove that middle seat. And then not only that, I can move one of the side seats into the middle if I wanted to. I don't have to. If I wanted that captain's chair is kind of set up, I can simply just remove it, maybe leave it in the garage and just leave it with these two seats in the middle if I wanted to, or I could just leave it there. It's up to you. And the cool thing is it gives you that option. So I love that. And in addition to that, of course, you get front seat back map pockets back there. You're going to have a ton of cup holders. You do, in addition to that, also have two USB charging ports. I love that because, of course, with the Odyssey, you're going to have kids in the back. 
and they're going to want to charge up their tablet. So yes, there are two USB charging ports for that. So absolutely love that as well. Also, tri-zoom climate control coming with the EX trim level it up, meaning if the rear passengers, the kids wanted a different temperature, they can actually adjust that using the uh, climate control information found kind of on the roof of the Odyssey there. So I think that's pretty cool. I like that. Rear window sunshades coming with the EX trim level and up. I absolutely love that. That is pretty cool. They are manual sunshades, but absolutely love that. They're so much better than the ones you could buy at Walmart. Upper seat back map pockets coming with the Touring and Elite. Don't have them today. We just have the standard seat back map pockets, which honestly are perfectly fine for me. And I did want to also mention with opening those rear doors, of course, with the minivan, you're not going to have the kids opening the doors into the vehicle next to you like you would in an SUV because they're kind of flush. They just open back. And you can control that using the key fob. That is one way you can do that. If you were outside of the Odyssey, you could just simply pull out on that door handle. That's actually going to open it and close it. And one more way, there is actually a button on the inside here if you were sitting down you could simply just press that button it's going to actually open up for you then as well but it is power rear doors there so definitely found that pretty cool i liked that but one last thing i wanted to mention for that second row at least is 10.2 inch rear entertainment system coming with the touring and elite that's going to be a blu-ray player or you can stream different things on there as well of course we don't have that today because we don't have those trims but did of course want to mention it but then making our way to the front seats power adjustable front seats coming with all trim levels cloth seating with the lx and ex trims leather seating for the exl trim level and up you will find heated seats for the ex trim level and up heated and ventilated seats then for the elite trim level as well but overall seats were plenty comfortable not the most comfortable seats i've ever felt but still plenty comfortable for a long road trip or something like that but then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping of course it is leather wrapped for the exl trim level and up l meaning leather and it will be heated only if you go with the elite trim level then but then making our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key you do have your nifty little honda logo on the one side and when you flip it over, a ton of different stuff you can check out on the other side. Lock, unlock, button to pop the rear hatch. The little circular button is going to be a remote start, so you can warm up the Odyssey on cold days before you actually get inside. And then, of course, the two car buttons in the middle there, that is going to be to open and close the doors on the side. In case anybody was curious, you just hold that down, basically, so that's pretty convenient as well. But overall, it is all keyless entry with a push-button start coming standard for every single trim level across the board. So all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just kind of to the left of the infotainment screen there. And so... Once started up, the majority of this gauge cluster is a digital display. You can actually control what is on that by using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel there. If you press the little home icon, you can check between trip information, Bluetooth information, radio information, when you need your next oil change as well, which I really like how Honda does that in their vehicles overall. You can actually also see your driving modes up there as well outside temperature the list goes on pretty much everything you could possibly want to see within those digital gauges up there but then taking a look at overall interior quality overhead sunglass holder with the school bus mirror that's what i'm gonna call it i think honda calls it a rear conversation mirror but it's a school bus mirror you can check all the kids in the back that's pretty cool power moonroof coming with the exl trim level end up that's why i like this particular trim that we have here today because we do have that because we have the exl trim level i found that pretty cool tri-zone climate control coming with the ex trim level and up home link controls this is another big one for me for up to three different garage doors found in the bottom portion of that rear view mirror if you were to go with that exl trim level end up again that we have today so auto dimming rear view mirror again with the exl trim level and up you get some blue ambient led lighting for the touring and elite trim levels only also wireless phone charger for the elite trim level only but one of the best parts about the interior quality maybe it's because it's a minivan but in between the front driver and passenger seats a lot of times you're going to find a whole lot of nothing taking up a whole lot of space but in the odyssey it's kind of left open so you can store things down there you could store things like maybe a purse or maybe a small suitcase or a chihuahua or something. There is so much space in between these two front seats here. I absolutely love it. It's very functional, very practical. Just above that, you have a USB charging port, 12 volt power outlet just behind that, two cup holders, and then an absolute ton of space within the center kind of cargo storage area. You got a little bit of lighting in there. Also an auxiliary port and a USB charging port within that as well. And in case anybody's wondering, 
Where is the center armrest? They're actually right against the seats. You simply just fold that down. It's a little bit different than a lot of people are used to, but that's where those armrests are going to be. They're individual for both the driver and the passenger. But overall, interior quality, I will say, is plenty practical and functional. Nothing that really blows you away, but it's very useful and it's very well laid out. I will say that. But then let's go ahead now and take a look at the infotainment screen here. And so if you were to go with the LX trim level, you're going to find a five inch color LCD screen, essentially from the nineties. But if you were to go with the EX trim level and up, you're going to get what you're looking at right now, which is an eight inch color touchscreen display. And actually Bluetooth and audio streaming come standard with either infotainment display. But if you wanted Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and you do, go with the EX trim level and up. And so what that is, if you have a smartphone, you simply hook it up to the Odyssey, and then therefore you have free navigation using your smartphone, but displayed up on the infotainment screen using Google Maps. If you have an Android, for example, which is the very best mapping system, in my personal opinion, also let you know if there's speed traps, which is pretty cool. But anyways, also you could check out Pandora, and there's a couple other compatible apps as well up on the infotainment screen. But very cool looking clocks. I always like to mention that with Honda. I think that's a pretty cool little thing that they do up on their infotainment screen. There's also a cabin talk system which you can access through this infotainment screen as well. Where you can project your voice into the rear seats. Of course, you probably don't need it quite honestly. You should be able to be loud enough that the kids can hear, but if you still wanted it, it's there for you. Also, you can check out your radio information up there. By the way, there are going to be two different sound systems for the Odyssey. First one is a seven speaker sound system with 160 watts, and that's gonna be essentially for every trim level but the Elite, because that Elite trim level is going to give you an 11 speaker sound system with 550 watts. So having said that, we got the EXL, so we do have that seven speaker sound system with us today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today here, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Actually, not that bad. Maybe it was the song. That was a really cool song, but definitely decent amount of clarity. Bass wasn't the most in the world. I got to admit that the bass wasn't the most, but it is a seven speaker sound system. You do have the 11 speaker sound system available if you wanted to go with that top trim level, but that sound system wasn't bad for seven speakers. I will say that. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put the Odyssey in reverse, you will find a rear view camera with dynamic grid lines coming standard for every single trim level across the board, which of course is going to let you know who or what is behind you. And as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so with this being an Odyssey, with this being more than likely a vehicle, you're going to have kids in the back. Safety is extremely important. And so first thing I wanted to mention to put your mind at ease, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS, and that pretty much is it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door lock, tire pressure monitoring system. That's all pretty boring at this point. Let's get to the fun stuff. Also standard for every single trim level across the board includes collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system for collision warning, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, traffic sign recognition, automatic high beams, and a rear seat reminder alert system then as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the 2022 Odyssey, crazy amount of space. I really think the Odyssey has a competitive advantage if you're comparing this to really any three-row SUV, maybe with the exception of like a Chevy Tahoe or a Suburban maybe, but crazy amount of cargo space, very nice third row legroom, which you almost never find in three-row SUVs. Also, the Odyssey, of course, has a history of great reliability as well. Gotta love that. The IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus means it's an extremely safe vehicle, so that's always important with minivans overall. I guess you could say Decent driving dynamics, actually, which kind of surprised me for a minivan as well. I think the only constructive criticism, maybe there's two of them. The only constructive criticisms I can think of for the Odyssey is I would have loved for an available all-wheel drive system to be there. Just because of the fact that when I hit the gas in this thing, there was a decent amount of slippage because all that power is being sent to the front wheels. And in Pennsylvania, we do get things like snow quite often as well as rain. So all-wheel drive definitely would have been optimal for me. But... LX infotainment system as well, being that five inch LCD screen is straight from the 90s. Honda, you really gotta update that. Just put the eight inch screen on there. I know it's gonna up the price a little bit, but still nobody wants that five inch LCD screen. For 2022, the Honda Passport has received a mid-cycle refresh. I think you know how this is gonna play out. 
first, we'll hit you up with that mid-cycle refresh graphic. There we go. And then I'll explain that the refreshed exterior styling is more aggressive. Let's see, there's a new rear bumper and updated exhaust finishers. Then up front, everything forward of the A-pillar has been aggressified. And while aggressified isn't actually a word, I think you know what I mean. Come on, look at that power bulge hood, revised front fenders, and blockier nose. Add in the new grill crossbar and what Honda calls a skid garnish, and yeah, the Passport went and got itself aggressified. So far, this all feels fairly predictable. But did you predict this? That's called drama. Drama, people. This 2022 Honda Passport happens to be the new Trail Sport trim. Trail Sport being a new series for Honda's light truck offerings. Further down the road, the Trail Sport line might include real functional upgrades like gnarlier off-road tires and suspension options. For now though, the Passport Trail Sport is mostly an appearance package. Does your Passport have orange badging, a more aggressive bumper, and pewter wheels, although I recognize these are black accessory wheels? If so, you might be driving a Trail Sport. Observant viewers might note that Honda has enhanced this particular Trail Sport with aftermarket modifications. It's got a 1.5 inch lift, Firestone all-terrain tires, prototype orange front recovery hooks, and that rooftop tent definitely is not stock. Consider this an expression of what an owner could do if they bought a refreshed Passport. And for the sake of comparison, here's what the 2022 Passport refresh looks like, minus all the aftermarket add-ons. Inside, the Passport Trail Sport is distinguished by orange stitching and logos on the headrest to remind you which Passport you bought. The Trail Sport also includes standard power folding mirrors for narrower trails, plus a heated windshield wiper pad for frosty adventures. That said, aside from a 10 millimeter wider track, the 2022 Honda Passport Trail Sport offers no notable off-road advantages versus any other all-wheel drive Passport. As a reminder, Honda's torque vectoring alphanumeric explosion of an all-wheel drive system, dubbed IVTM4, can send up to 70% of the engine's power to the rear tires, and from there, actively apportion up to 100% of that power to either the left or right rear tire. Speaking of power, the 3.5 liter V6's output remains unchanged for 2022. And like the 2021 Passport, transmission duties are still handled by a nine-speed automatic transmission. Inside, updates for 2022 are minimal. These uh, gauge needles are now white, and there's now a new rear seat passenger reminder so you don't forget your uh, wife, kids, or household pets. Honda won't release 2022 pricing until closer to its on-sale date near the end of 2021, but the current version starts just under $33,000, not including destination charges. Where pricing is concerned, I'm not expecting a major bump for 2022. I also wouldn't expect hardcore off-roaders to abandon their Jeeps, Broncos, and 4Runners for a trail sport, but I am excited for Honda to explore its rugged side. Honda, if you're taking requests, I would love a passport that I can jump.